So I'm continuing my series on uh, women who inspire me in 2013. Uh, And even though we've kind of worked together throughout the years, this is like the first time I've really had a conversation with her. Uh, She released a new book. It is called Your Blueprint. Uh, Miss Elvira Guzman, welcome. Thank you. Hi, how are you? I'm good. So for people who aren't aware of you, I mean, you are like a PR guru. I mean, you have taken some... uh, names that maybe weren't so big and turned them into bigger names, but I've dealt with you probably almost my entire radio career um, through the publicity thing. And now you're an author and you're helping people um, not only figure out their PR and their brand, but also inspiring them along the way. So tell me about uh, your blueprint and why you decided to write it. Well, um, the honest reason why I decided to write it was because I'm just tired of being treated badly. Um, you know, working in this industry 12 years, um, and I started as an intern, people would, you know, poke their noses up at me because I didn't have the background that they had, or I didn't have the rank that they had. And, you know, the people that did treat me well, I remember I would just be like a little puppy, like, oh my gosh, I'll do anything for you because you just treated me nice. And so I remembered that. So when I started to advance in the, in the business, I would treat, you know, the receptionist or, you know, the housekeeper, Mm -hmm. whoever is, is, the same exact way that I would treat everybody else and it worked for me 12 years later here I am and you know I started my company at 23 and you know I've had a lot of successes so I wanted to share that information with others so that others could be happy and you know I believe that hurt people hurt people I don't want hurt people to hurt me anymore because it it doesn't feel good and you, I mean, you do have a surprising story. It's like I, I said, we've, you know, we've worked together, but we really don't know each other. And I was really surprised um, by the, some of the struggles that you've had. Can you share some of the ones that have, have changed you or touched you? Yeah, um, the one that impacted me the most was, you know, when my parents went to jail when I was 14. Um, that had such a profound impact. You know, I was a freshman in high school, and if you could, if looking back now, those are the years that really shape you. Right. And when you go from have, I went from having everything. I had, you know, two, two parents who owned their business. They didn't make a lot of money, but you know, it was an honest living, and you know, we didn't want for anything. And I, you know, there was somebody at home who would cook and clean. To you know, my only job was to get straight A's. You know, I went from doing that to having to be a babysitter for you know three kids, and I had to be the housekeeper, and I had to you know go to school and you know play sports and it it was traumatic but you know what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and from that I learned and I said you know what I I realized that at that moment you have to walk alone and that's what that experience brought to me and I wanted to share it with the world because I feel that so many people feel that oh my parents need to help me or my husband needs to help me or my mentor needs to help me no you need to help yourself you know that's the major point so how do you suggest people get started? I mean, because you, you've represented a variety of people um, and helped them develop their brand and then bring it <laughs> to the world. Yeah. Um, so what do you say to people on, on how to get started um, with their brand? I mean, it seems like everybody now can be their own brand with social media and other platforms, you know, outside of traditional media. So what do you say to people about developing their brand? Very What's simple. the blueprint? My- okay. Um, very simple. In my book, chapter eight is from your pain is your purpose. That's where you find it. For for me, my my pain was my parents going to jail and abandoning me. So my purpose is to share the message of you're supposed to walk alone. And once you know I, I'm able to have success with this book, I want to develop centers where kids after school, if they don't have a place to go and their parents are in jail. Um, that they could go and they don't have to be alone. There's mentors and therapists. So for my pain, I was able to realize my purpose. So what this book does is it reminds you of your pain. So that way, no matter whatever you want to do, you want to be an actor, a comedian, a business owner, you have to know what your purpose is in order for you to be successful. So that would be the very first step. I know. I I tell a lot of people, I mean, we get a lot of pitches um, yeah. around here. I mean, people have a lot of things to sell and I think that all of them are important, but I think the ones that stand out to me are the ones who, um, who realize that it's more than selling a book or it's more yes. than selling a song and it's more about who you are and what you have to offer to the world. So how important do you think it is, um, when you talk to your clients and other people who are trying to, um, get some exposure to be authentic and to be themselves. And like you said, figure out what your purpose is, through your pain. 
And I'm so excited about this question because I was just thinking about this yesterday. Um, it, it's extremely important that that we find our way that we realize that we're here for more than just us. Um, you know, I tell my clients, if you're only doing this for money, it's going to all go away and more. But if you're doing this for the greater good of others, you're going to be so successful. You're not going to know what to do with all of the money. I love that. And that's the secret. That's the secret. And, you know, like you, I used to be in your position. I used to be the executive producer of the Sea Party Morning Show. And I used to get tons and tons of, of pitches. And you know what's authentic and you know what is people are just doing it to make mm -hmm. money. You know, and I was never about just to make money. I was always, what's going to help everybody? And then that's what I would book because then you're you're touching lives. And then that's what what's going to bring you more viewers and bring more good karma. And so we know. So what are some what are some tried and true tips that you have for people uh, on getting exposure besides just being uh, yourself and 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 finding your purpose? Hustling. I think, um, <laughs> people are lazy nowadays. Um, I recommend that everybody live in New York for at least one year, like I did. Um, you know, I am from California, born and raised, but I've lived in New York and I've lived in Atlanta. And I tell all of my mentees, if you really want to know business, go to uh, New York for one year because you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I'm so slow. And then, but when you relocate back to your hometown, you're gonna look at everybody else like, oh my gosh, you're not waking up at you know six o'clock. Hello, this is East Coast time. Like we need to get going. Like we only have a certain amount of years, like good work years that we could get in, you know, because the rest of the time we're going to be, you know, with the family and all that great stuff. Like, you know, get on your hustle. And every single morning, if you're not waking up saying, okay, what am I doing today? What's my to-do list? Then you're not going to win. That is so funny. It's like when I went to, uh, to college on the East coast, I was like, so taken aback by all these New Yorkers that like you said, <laughs> they move at the speed of light, yes. but it's like the people from New York that I went to college with are like the P diddies. <laughs> Who are now exactly. doing the thing. I mean, they're all like out there doing something. So that that's an interesting take on it. I never really thought about it like that. Exactly. When I first moved out there, um, I remember being calling my mom and I was like, Mom, I was like, people are so rude here. They're yes. Like, in the street. And then like, I swear to God, three months in, I was like, get out of my way. Like, I'm late. Like, I need to get this taxi before you. Like, you become that. And then you're, but I was never like the rude one. I was always like, excuse me, you know, but I got to go, you know. So it was fun. So what, what do you hope to accomplish with this book? Oh, universal love and unity and to wake everybody up. I think that everyone's in a state of zombie land. And, you know, I think we're plagued by, you know, for instance, what's going on with Rihanna and Chris Brown and, you know, the Frank Ocean rather than, did you guys know that North Korea is like, might, you know, send a nuclear. <laughs> we're their most hated like, enemy now. <laughs> Like, is that what you're thinking about? Like, I just, yeah. I'm just like, wake up. I want to shake people awake. Like, pay attention to the things that truly matter. You know, stop listening to this garbage music and stop letting that influence you and your children. You know, one of the things that, you know, I plan to do, not just through this book, but through television and through music. I'm developing TV shows because I don't like the state of music. I don't like the state of TV shows. You know, this is just the beginning. All right. So how can people get your book? Oh, they can buy my book on alviraguzman.com for now. And I'm working on a deal with Barnes & Noble. So hopefully on 329 on Good Friday, it will be available oh. in Barnes & Noble stores. Excellent. Excellent. And your website, you say that again and, for me? Yes, alviraguzman.com. That's where you can purchase my book. And for PR, it's lvgpr.com. All right. Thank you, Miss Elvira. I appreciate yeah. it. And best of luck. I'm glad that we Thank had so this, this know, little time together. Thank you. <laughs> We'll talk soon. Elvira Guzman. You.